Hello, this is Donnie from Melancholy Gesture Games, and today I'm giving you a tutorial on how to do seamless textures in Substance Painter. And um, so what we're going to do here is for the process, we need to create a model that will essentially allow us to test the UV mapping to make sure that uh, basically the texture is seamless and uh, basically usable uh, for whatever seamless texture we need uh, so what we'll do here is I've got blender open I'm using currently using blender 4.1 and what we will do is I will select every object in this scene I'm just going to delete them press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them uh, press a to select all the objects press delete to delete the objects and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here click add go to mesh and click plane uh, what this will do is this will give me one single um plane one single face to work with however we're going to separate this um, i'm going to hit seven on my numpad here uh, this will give us a top orthographic view and i'm just going to zoom in here just so i can see a little bit easier here um, but what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit tab uh, what this does is it will take us into edit mode and basically we're going to have this one solid face to work with and so what I'm going to do, since I have to separate this into separate uh, faces, is it, the simplest way to do it, if you hit Control R on your keyboard, and then move your cursor to one of the edges, you'll see that line appear. If you use your mouse wheel and scroll up, that will add an additional line. Uh, these go off of the center of that quad, so essentially um, you'll be able to add some edges uh, to whichever side you move your cursor closest to. Um, but I'm going to put that right here, and then I'm going to right click to get off that. So again, I'll do that again, and I'll explain that one more time. I hit Control R, I moved my cursor to the edge, mouse wheel up, and then I left click first to place the edges. And then you see right here, I can actually move the edges here. We don't want to do that. We just want that right in the center. So I'm going to right click and that will place the edges right there evenly across that center. So now we have a three by three plane that will allow us to um, essentially unwrap this. We can UV unwrap this and it will be our base model to build these textures off of. Uh, so what we want to do now is we'll go into UV editing and from UV editing, you'll see here, we've got our model here again, the faces that were selected before, uh, they're still selected. What we want to do is we want to individually select a face and unwrap it. So to do that, I'm going to select, I'm going to press three on my keyboard to put myself into face select mode. And I'm going to start with this one up here. And you'll see here that we've got the face selected over here. And again, I'm going to go ahead and hit three. So I'm in face select mode right here. And so what we want to do is with this selected, I'm going to go up to UV and hit reset. What that will do is that will fill the entire UV box with that face. And then we just want to do that with each of these faces. So do again, we're going to click on it, hit reset, go over here, click on it and hit reset, click on it over here, hit reset, click on it, go over here, hit reset. And we're going to do this across the whole mesh. This is the after recording Donnie. Uh, coming to you to let you know that you can actually select all the faces at once and do this. However, for the sake of this tutorial, I went ahead and did it this way just because I felt like this was simplest for a beginner. Um, now we've got our unwrapped model here. Uh, so what we want to do is we're going to go up to File, Export, and then Export FBX. What we we'll want to do is we're going to want to select selected objects, put a check box there and un, you know, uncheck baked animation. We don't really have to mess with any of these options, but these are definitely good options to keep in mind for future references when you're creating models. Um, additionally, I usually use like Y forward 
or negative y forward uh, when creating models for use in Unity. Um, your settings are going to be heavily dependent on your personal use for the models. Uh, you could get away with using the defaults. Um, just keep in mind that there's some elements that you may try and do that for and it may not work. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go over to one of my folders. I'm just going to go ahead and use the folder I use for my uh, spiders on a spaceship uh, game here. And I'm going to just title this um, Pileable Texture Assets. I'm just going to name it that. Just so that way we have a, you know, this is obvious what we're using this for. So I'm going to export the FBX. So next I'm going to go ahead and open up Substance Painter. All right, so as you can see, I am currently in Substance Painter. Now I do use the Steam Edition because that is a perpetual license. You'll have access to that version of Substance Painter in perpetuity. You don't have to pay a monthly subscription. I highly suggest people to pick this up if they are trying to get an introduction into Substance Painter. Um, and if you don't need all of the additional access to different assets that is available through a full paid monthly subscription um, typically you're probably not going to need that although they are quality of life features so i wouldn't fault you if for whatever reason that is something you wanted to do um, either way uh, today uh, here's what we're going to do i'm going to go up file and hit new and we're going to basically create our stuff off of a template we can either um, you know pick unity unreal engine you know i typically use unity so i'm going to go with that and of course we're going to select our document resolution now keep in mind this resolution is going to be dependent on the game and the fidelity of the graphics that you want to use um, i'm going to just go ahead and leave it at the 2048 i feel like that's a pretty high quality texture without having to go into full hd you know 4096 4k textures um 4k textures um are kind of excessive in some situations you just kind of have to figure out what works best for you though um so we're going to go ahead and do that and i'm going to select the file so we go there and we just find our titleable texture asset open that up and then hit okay so now we should have our titleable texture asset right here. And then what you'll see is if I start painting, you will see that I can paint in a titleable fashion here. It's seamless. There's no, uh, no seams whatsoever. Um, so that works pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control Z though, cause I don't want that. And I'm going to drop this in here. So as you'll see, when I drop that in there, this creates our texture for this particular material now in some cases these materials the way they are designed they do have the seams in a way what i usually suggest in this case here is you can go through the different projections pick different ones that may fit what you're trying to do you got tri planner fill you know fill works pretty good um it, again this is all dependent on what your use case is however as you can see in this particular um example the fill option provides us with the best results for using one of these particular assets here so if i were to export this particular texture you'll see that this will be pretty much seamless. And then of course, you know, you can go in and add little things like, uh, let's find a button of sorts here. We can toss this in here, right? And I don't know why there's an extra edge right there. I'd, I'd have to figure that out, but I didn't. This is just a example, so. Uh, but anyway, here, if we drag that in here, uh, we've got this particular little um, object here. And if we drag it along, you can see that uh, if we place it over the seam, 
it will apply to the normal map in a seamless way. So this is something this is something that you can do um, to kind of give yourself something, you know, fancy or whatever. Um, but what I'm going to do for the sake of this scroll, just to kind of prove the concept here for for you here. So I'm going to find a stucco. Um, let's see, plaster. Let's see, what would be a good uh, wall? You know, concrete. We'll just go with concrete. Concrete will work. Um, so when we go in here, I'm going to go with fill again. So that fills the whole the whole thing again. So um, what we're looking at here is the projection of the fill across the whole thing. And again, it's a seamless texture. We don't have uh, uh, it, it's basically we're not uh, we're not stressing how it looks because it looks pretty freaking good, right? It looks it looks really good. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I saw a texture that I wanted to use. Let's find that. You know, we'll just use this. No, we'll use this. It's a little more of a complicated one. Uh, we're going to use that as a mask. And what I'll do is I'll scale it up. I can hit R and that takes you into scale mode. And you just scale it up. And as you can see there, even if you're slightly off, on the right there, you'll see that it kind of shows you where it's meeting at. So you'll actually be able to see it as it's, you know, connecting. Um, and so what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the color on this. I'm going to set this to like a, uh, you know, I'm feeling like a black might be good. Okay. And of course the concrete color, I'm going to change that to, but we will go with a purple-ish. And pretty much that's done. I could use this as a texture for a floor, ceiling, wall, whatever. Obviously you probably wouldn't use a concrete material for this. Uh, you'd probably use a fabric color or a fabric material of sorts and of course you're going to have like a ton of different options that you can use from here or you can create your own uh even import your own um sky's the limit pretty much so now what we're going to do here is we've got this um text this material uh we're going to go ahead and export it so we will go down to file export textures and we're going to set the output directory. So in this case here, I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in the directory where I had the title asset there. And uh, we'll just select that folder here. Um, if you want a full rundown on how to output textures and everything, um, there are tutorials out there for that. Um, maybe I'll make one in the future for more specific things. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit export. And that will output our material. So as you see, we've got the FBX file, the model that we exported, and then we've got our three materials here, um, or three textures. So what I'll do is I will open up Unity, and what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and add a plane. So we got our plane here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this over and drag it over again just so we can test the scaling here or the the material and i'm going to snap them together for the just so you follow along with what i'm doing there i just held down v and grabbed the edge here that's a vertice and just snapped it on to the other one here so i'll create a material and we're just going to do a test tileable And so now we've got that here. Let's go ahead and just drag the maps in here. There we go. We got our textures in. Uh, this one here, we want to set that to normal map. I'm not going to adjust any of these settings here. This works just fine for the tutorial. 
Uh, so I'm going to drag that in. Uh, this is our mask. We're going to put that under the, me the metallic map. And then this one we'll drag under normal map. So now we just put these on the objects. And as you see, we have a fully tileable texture. Um, all the materials are seamless. Um, if there was any sort of imperfections that we made in it, it it's just as simple as just adjusting the painting that we did but for the most part we did a fairly phenomenal job i think um, everything looks good it's all one cohesive unit and uh, you know you, you can't even notice a scene so i'm hoping that this tutorial was helpful for you if you found this tutorial helpful please give this video a like and possibly subscribe to my channel for future tutorials um, I will be putting out more tutorials over time. Um, also, my game, The Tunnels of St. Mercy Road, is out on itch.io. Check it out. You can check it out the link in the comments and in the description. And uh, let me know what you think about it. Um, but other than that, this has been Donnie with Melancholy Jester Games. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching this video.